Are you looking to upgrade your jewelry game? Add some accessories to your outfits? Well, I got you covered. Arici London is a men's jewelry company based out of London. Let me tell you guys about the product. The products are either silver or gold plated with 18K gold or premium 316L stainless steel. And the finishes for the jewelry are created with anodosing and dipping multiple times to thickly seal and play the jewelry for maximum and unbeatable durability. You know what that means? It means the product will never rust, tarnish, or turn your skin green. You know what the best part is? All the products are completely waterproof, sweat proof, and heat proof and they'll never fade, tarnish, or even rust. And the products are waterproof, sweatproof, and heat proof. And that means they'll never fade or tarnish. Another good thing, the products are 100% hyperallergenic and you can wear any pieces 24-7. You don't have to worry about your skin developing a rash because the product does not contain nickel. And this is good for me actually because I have really, really sensitive skin. I have a couple of nice chains and a nice pendant here, the compass, and I got some bracelets here, a gold and silver one. The bracelets and the quality of the jewelry overall is really, really good. And it's a really good price. And you can get an even better price if you use my code FONZ, F-O-N-Z, for 25% off your order. And also you get some free shipping on top of that. What more can you ask for? I'm telling you guys, it's some good quality jewelry. I'm really into accessories. I'm into some jewelry. So you definitely want to check out Arici London. Go to arichilondon.com. Get yourself some high quality either chains, pendants, bracelets, or rings right now. And use code FONZ, F-O-N-Z, for 25% off your order. Go do that right now. Go New York. Go New York. Go! Hello, everybody, and welcome back to YouTube channel. As I, Fonz the Falco, thank you so much for taking just a few short minutes of your fabulous day to check out another video here on the channel. And here we are going to be discussing on today's video, at least, my New York Knicks. Not sure if you are aware, but now if you follow my TikTok page for all and my stuff on the YouTube end pocket, as you know, I am a big New York Knicks fan. Let me tell you, this season was definitely memorable. Look, off the bat, I'll say this, 50 and 32 this season, second seed in the East. I will say, you know, it's probably what people might say, I still call this a very successful season because for the recent part of the past couple of years, I've just dealt with sadness and pain, missed playoffs, big losers in free agency and whatnot too, players not working out at all. And overall, just this with this season, it's definitely memorable, one of the better seasons I've had as a Knicks fan. And honestly, the past couple of seasons, I would say in 2021, you saw the trend in the right direction. We're on a really, really good track, I must say. And right now what this video is gonna be is kind of recapping what happened in the 23-24 season, a little bit about the playoffs, and what's going on with free agency and kind of my thoughts to end the video. But really the start of this season, we had a completely different lineup to what it is now when to close out the season. We had two trades that happened throughout the season, and the first one, was a really important one. We ended up trading RJ Barrett and Emmanuel quickly to the Toronto Raptors in exchange for Preston Chiwa and OG Ananobi. And I will say OG was linked to the Knicks for quite some time. I wasn't sure it was ever gonna happen, but we ended up getting him in a deal. We sent off RJ and quickly. And as much as I loved Barrett and quickly, those guys really weren't fitting the mold with this Knicks team. Barrett was very inconsistent. I didn't know if I trusted him at one point of being a number two or number three option. And quickly, as much as I was a fan of him, he was going to get paid big time in the offseason, and there was no way we were going to be able to afford to keep him. And the main thing, we needed help on the defensive end. That's exactly what OG did the second he made his debut on the Knicks roster. It was a then record plus minus of 170 in the first 10 games, and we outscored opponents by 21.7 points per 100 possessions in the 23 games we had with OG. And Presta Chiwa, another addition to the roster, was no slouch either. But in January, when we had the full healthy lineup, they went 14-2, and two, and there was just a lot of bright spots, and hope will be like, wow, this team can actually make a deep run. And on top of that, too, we made another trade around the trade deadline. We traded away Quentin Grimes, Evan Fournier, Malachi Flynn, who we got previously in the OG deal, and Ryan Archidiakono to the Detroit Pistons in exchange for Alec Burks and Boyang Bogdanovich. Now, for me, I was a Quentin Grimes fan as well, too, and he did well in the start of the season as a 3 and D guy, but he ended up struggling with his three-point shot, kind of struggled to fit into the rotation. He ended up kind of falling out of the rotation and losing his starting spots to OG, so it made sense for him to get moved on. And the Burks and Boyan acquisition were very good, good spot up three point shooters, some good scoring options off the bench. But of course, there was some downside to this season. January 27th, to be exact, is when the things started tumbling down in the not so right way. Obviously, Randall dislocated his shoulder. He ended up missing the rest of the season in hopes to come back for the playoffs. Ended up not happening. OG did miss some time with a elbow injury. Mitch Robinson, who was actually having a somewhat solid season, missed a good portion of the year with an ankle injury. That didn't stop there because we had a thin roster to begin with into the playoffs. But then Bogdanovich missed the season with wrists and foot injuries. Josh Hart had an abdomen injury in the playoffs. And Jalen Brunson ended Game 7 with a broken hand. So we were very, very depleted. Not just from those injuries, but other little ones here out. 
But look, there was some positive. Jalen Brunson ended up earning his first All-Star nod. Julius Randle was also named an All-Star before his injury. Jalen Brunson was actually also a four-time player of the week and one-time player of the month. And Brunson was also selected the All-NBA second team selection the first time in his career. He had a really, really good season for us. And we kind of know what happened into the playoffs too. We went to six games with the Sixers with a very, very, very depleted roster. It was going to be tough to go against the Indiana Pacers. We ended up starting up series 2-0. And then as you know, End up losing game seven, an absolute heartbreaker in a blowout game with literally six healthy guys. And honestly, it, it sucked. It, it sucked. I watched every single playoff game. We looked really good in so moments. There was a lot of definitely some memorable moments. Dante DiVincenzo's three-point shot against the 76ers in game two. But there was also some downside. The injuries were the big, big part of it. And I'll say this now. If the team did not have any injuries, if everybody was relatively healthy heading into the playoffs, I think we would have been still playing right now, even in the conference finals. We were that damn good with everybody healthy on the floor, especially with the big three of OG Brunson and Julius Randle. But outside of that, a lot of guys definitely stepped up throughout the season. Miles McBride who I was a huge fan of, finally got some significant playing time once the team traded away quickly in Barrett. It created a role for McBride, and he definitely stepped up nicely, getting some nice, huge extended mids, especially come playoff time. A nice 3 and D three-point shooter. I think McBride is going to be a huge part in our second unit going forward. And he was even better in the playoffs. And we actually have a huge bargain on his contract. Three years left at $4.35 million. An absolute steal and a bargain for this guy. And he's going to be a huge part for our rotation. And I think he's quickly becoming a fan favorite with Knicks fans. Isaiah Hardenstein also had a pretty good season for the Knicks as well too. Having career highs across the board in points, assists, steals, and blocks. When Mitch Robinson was down with an injury, Hardenstein stepped up nicely becoming a solid rebounder and just an offensive presence on the team and also became a fan favorite too and Dante DiVincenzo the Italian stallion the great Italian here did very well for us a big signing for us last season the Villanova star had career highs across the board and actually now has the record for most three-pointers made in a Knicks season came into the beginning of the year as a reserve quickly earned himself a starting spot with injuries heading to the roster and did not lose a spot at all and obviously there was a lot of other guys that were really mentioned here too that did really well but I gotta say a lot of good players a lot of good moments here and we have a very very good positive direction heading forward and when it comes to the roster here we got a couple of questions heading into offseason we got some guys that are going to be on the roster for some time obviously Jalen Brunson still has two years left on his current deal a very very good acquisition now a cheap contract now he would have gotten a bigger bigger contract now he's actually reported to sign a four-year 156 million dollar extension instead of getting the max contract for next season he's getting the hometown discount because he wants to build a nice championship roster around him which I think is a good good call I think it's something that the Knicks fans haven't seen in quite some time with a certain free agent so this is really really good for him and i'm really excited to see what they can do to build around him now because clearly he wants to be able to win and this is a very very good opportunity outside of jalen brunson josh hart also has some years on this contract as well to sign an extension last all season and he also became a huge favorite with the knicks too showed some new york toughness and fits the knicks system really well especially in the postseason coming out with all these injuries playing the power forward spot grabbing all those rebounds and just a tenacious rebounder and defender and a really good three-point shooter do it all guard can literally do everything and i think he has a very very bright future with the Knicks and he's going to have another great season but another guy I quickly want to talk about here is another one the big question mark with the season is what are we going to do with Julius Randle now also if you aren't aware I've been a big Julius guy from day one in 2019 when the team signed and when they missed out on Kevin Durant Kyrie Irving and Zion Williamson they ended up signing Julius Randle I actually was really intrigued by this signing because he was at one point a top lottery pick for the Los Angeles Lakers had a good season prior with the New Orleans Pelicans a 20 and 10 guy I said to myself if he can get in the right opportunity he will flourish and it happened off the bat earning an all-star nod and most improved player and earning more all nba team selections I like his toughness. I like his play style. He's like a bull in a china shop, and he fits the New York system well, especially with Tom Thibodeau. Now say what you want with Julius Randle's shot selection and his playoff run last season against the Miami Heat, but I really, really wish I was able to see him play in this playoffs because I really think he was going to prove a lot of people wrong. Things were starting to really, really click together with Jalen Brunson, even with the acquisition of OG. We only sold him for a short time with those three together. And he does have one left in his contract with $30 million with a player option for the following season at $32 million and is eligible for an extension in 25 26. Now, there have been some rumblings that the Knicks might look to trade Julius Randle. And I'm going to say this right now I don't think the Knicks should trade Julius Randle away. Him and Tom Thibodeau were the foundation for this New York team's recent success. 
And I really think he was starting to come into his own with the OG and the Jalen Brunson trio. It was really, really built to be something special, if not for that shoulder injury. And this sort of reminds me of a scenario I see in Minnesota. And I want you to hear me out on this. And I'm not saying that Jalen Brunson's Anthony Edwards or Carl Anthony Towns is Julius Randle. But this scenario itself, it kind of reminds me of the Minnesota scenario. You see, back in 2015, Carl Anthony Towns was drafted by the Timberwolves to be the savior for the franchise because the franchise was in shambles, the laughing stock for quite some time. And Carl Anthony Towns ended up becoming a star player for the Timberwolves, bringing them to somewhat relevancy. Now, not deep playoff runs, but an appearance here or there and put the Timberwolves somewhat on the map. And when Anthony Edwards did come into the picture, we weren't sure what was going to happen to Carl Anthony Towns. Was he going to actually be moved? Were they going to move him? But he ended up taking a step back, not complaining, being like, you know what? I'll be the number two guy. Anthony Edwards is the clear number one. This is going to be his team. I built the foundation, but I will be going second fiddle to him, and I'll help build the successful championship pursuits. Now, do you see where I'm going here with this. This is clearly Jalen Brunson's team. He's the number one guy. There's no doubt about it. But I think Julius Randle could take a page out of Cat's book and kind of see what's going on in Minnesota and be like, you know what? We're building something special here. I'm a 20 and 10 guy. I'll take a step back, be second fiddle. This is Brunson's team, but I'll still make contributions as much as I can. Because again, this guy is no bum. He's an all NBA selection multiple times, all-star multiple times, 20 and 10 guy. This guy, I really don't think we should move on from him. If the Pacers series didn't show you anything, it showed that we needed some size down low and Randall would have been an excellent part against the Pacers. I think we would have ended up winning that series if Randall was healthy. Personally for me, I just don't think we should trade him. That's just my honest opinion about it. Now, I'm also a big Mitch Robinson guy. I love the defensive guys. He's been a long tenure Nick with us, actually the longest tenure Nick, and I really do like this guy a lot. When healthy, this guy is a rim-protecting offensive rebounding force, but that's the key word here when he's healthy because this year was no different he ended up only playing 31 games because of an ankle injury had surgery did come back and i give him props for that but ended up missing the second round because of the aggravated ankle injury and that's kind of the problem that robinson's been having for a couple of seasons now he's never had a full healthy season he's always had constant nagging injuries but when he's on the court he's a difference maker on the defensive end and is a great great rim protector but at two years left in his contract with close to 30 million dollars is it time to move on from him? I look at it like this. You could have Robinson come off the bench and play limited minutes. That's fine. Is it worth for $13 million a season? Eh, we're not sure. But would you want to trade him away? Because what you're going to get for him, what team is going to want to have a young center that has some injury history with an expensive contract of some sorts? And the previously mentioned before, Boyan Bogdanovich actually has one year left in his contract at $19 million, and it's partially guaranteed. Now, we did struggle a little bit when he was on the Knicks when he got traded from the Detroit Pistons, but once the playoffs all around, you kind of saw him getting in the right direction here. But unfortunately, a foot injury ended up having him costing the rest of the second round. He could possibly be moved as well, but I think it'd be nice to have him on the team again, keep him around for next season because he is a good, solid veteran presence and a good sharpshooter off the bench. Because not too long ago, this guy was literally averaging 20 points. And again, I know it was against the Pistons, but look at the career stats he's had. He's put up some really good numbers. He's a walking bucket. Now, there are some free agents on this roster. The previous, you mentioned OG and OB and Isaiah Hartenstein are the two main ones. OG's unrestricted with a player option, and it's likely that he will decline his player option to see what he can get in free agency. I think the Knicks need to do whatever they can to keep OG Ananobi back on the roster. There's some questions about his health. He did miss some significant time and he has some injury problems. But I think it's worth taking the risk because you saw when he was on the court, he was a huge difference maker. And plus, when you look at it, was it really worth trading Barrett in quickly for half a year of OG or honestly even a quarter because he only played 23 regular season games? I think that's your main priority. You definitely bring him back. Fans like him. The teammates definitely like him. He fits Tom Thibodeau's system really well. You do whatever you can to keep him around. Now, Isaiah Harnstein is definitely another one you want to keep around too. I'd say OG's the 1A and Harnstein's the 1B. Harnstein is going to get a huge bag this offseason he definitely definitely deserves it he put up some monster numbers and he shows that he could be a starting caliber center on an nba roster but he has so much good chemistry with brunson hart and the other guys previously mentioned so i think the knicks will do also anything they can to keep him around he clearly said him all the times he loves to play for the knicks and he loves new york and he's definitely embraced the fans here so I hope he takes a little bit of a discount to stay in New York. Now, so two of the guys I'll mention is one pressure to you, who's going to be a restricted free agent, meaning any team that offers him a contract, the Knicks have a couple days to match it. Now, Precious was just considered an afterthought in the OG deal, but he ended up quickly getting a rotation spot with all these injuries and proved his worth. I'll tell you, fans really liked his defensive presence. This is a block machine here. And he had some nice rotational minutes. And even when guys were out during the playoffs, he stepped in nicely. Is he a starting forward in the NBA? No, but he is a very good, valuable role player. And I think the Knicks should try to bring him back. Match any offer that other teams offer him because he might get some offers in free agency but within reason if a team overpays precious maybe the Knicks kind of take a step back and don't match the offer 
Now, another one I'll mention quickly is Alec Burks. Now, I've trashed Alec Burks from time to time because when he came back to the Knicks, I was looking to be like, oh, he'll be a nice veteran sharpshooter off the bench. He ended up struggling in the regular season. But I give credit where credit is due because once his name was called upon onto the Pacers series when he didn't have any playing time against the 76ers, he stepped up nicely, averaging 14.8 points a game, including 26 points in the Game 7 loss. I know it was a loss, but he did provide that veteran presence there. When his name was called upon, he stepped up right away. So what should the New York Knicks do in the offseason? What should the roster look like for the 24-25 season? Simply put, run it back. We didn't see this roster fully together when everyone was fully healthy. And we saw a glimpse of it in January. And that record in January was something I think we should take a look at more. Now, I know a lot of people say that some teams have these fluke playoff runs. and They bring everybody back to see what they can do and they end up falling apart the following season. But this is a little bit different because with the Knicks, they didn't have the full roster to begin with heading into the playoffs. So with this fully healthy offseason, I think we can make some noise. Obviously, re-sign OG. That's the top priority. Then Isaiah Hartenstein. Those are the first two you got to get off the bat. Better bring back Preston Chua on a low level deal and match one if it does fit the gap and if not maybe someone like Najee Marshall New Orleans Pelicans could be a good 3 and D replacement but I do like Precious a lot so I hope they can bring him back bring back Burks on a cheap veteran minimum give him the minimum here because I think he was a good valuable locker room presence and it showed when his name was called upon in the moments he did step up nicely and if it's a veteran minimum I don't mind if he comes back he's been with the team for long enough in two separate stints he knows the system he knows Thibodeau why not bring him back? If you really want to, you trade Mitch Robinson if there is value for it. Don't just trade him to trade him away. If you're going to get some good assets in return, some veterans, some cap space, some future draft picks, then yes. But if you're just going to trade him just to trade him to get some guys that don't fit this roster, then keep him intact. I wouldn't mind him coming off the bench and have Hardenstein start if you do bring him back. And I definitely think you should keep Julius Randle for another season. Talk to him and see what he wants to do and have him stay for another season. And hey, if it doesn't work out, then trade him the following season or maybe at the deadline. But I think you got to run it back one more time. As far as the draft picks go, they have the 24th and 25th pick and the 38th pick. I think they should trade for one of those picks away. And for the other ones, maybe the 38th pick, you do a draft and stash type of player. And with the 24th and 25th pick, you definitely get some depth. Get some bench. Get some depth, depth, depth that you can eventually develop into a full rotation guy down the line. But really think with all the injuries we definitely need to get some veteran depth guys who play on the minimum maybe some guys for low level deals to bring them on the team because now i think new york is a very big attraction for free agents maybe acquire someone like a bruce brown from toronto who would definitely be a good spot for the knicks roster don't just get players to get players like we've seen in years past as much as i like devin booker's game zach levine's game even a paul george or whatever I'm not too sure about it because I think this Knicks team is definitely very special. You got to fit the mold here. What will fit under Tom Thibodeau's system? What's going to fit with this Knicks roster? Could you do a Mikhail Bridges from the Brooklyn Nets and reunite the Villanova core? You could definitely do that, but the Nets refused to give up Mikhail Bridges for some reason. They said no to a deal with the Rockets for Jalen Green to multiple first round picks. It's going to take a lot for us to get Mikhail Bridges. And I really don't think we should trade Julius to the Brooklyn Nets to get Mikhail Bridges in return because we need the size. And I think Mikhail Bridges, as much as I like him, I'm not sure he's a good replacement for Randall. But look, that's just me. Overall, I think the Knicks should just kind of bring this core back, hopefully get OG and Harnstein back. It's going to look like they're gonna stay back that's just my prediction but i think we're gonna have all these guys i'm gonna say for the most part have a majority of this roster back maybe precious and mitch go to other teams depending on what happens but overall this is weird to say because this is the first time in a long time where i'm a very confident knicks fan heading into the offseason what do you think the new york knicks should do in the 24 offseason let me know what they're going to do this summer comment down below should they trade julius randall am i an idiot for loving julius randall so much let me know down below on that as well if you haven't already definitely consider subscribing to the channel this is fonz the falco this is me hello and this channel is more of grab back stuff you're going to get some wrestling videos some top tens some video game stuff which i talked about recently with the college football game some nick stuff here anything even my podcast the slick back kickback report but if you don't like video podcasts you can go on the wherever you get your audio one on spotify or apple Podcasts, wherever you follow my tiktok and instagram at fonce the falcon links for that are all down below if you like sports jerseys and uniform talk you want to head over to fonce talk jerseys on youtube down below also on instagram fonce talk jerseys you see this julius randall one right here i talk exclusive jersey content on that channel but for the non-jersey content you get it right here on this channel but that wraps up this video thank you so much for checking out this video have a good day good night good evening whenever you're watching this said video and i'll catch you all next time bing bong